solo female travel and reinventing myself at the age of 60. So a very different view to start this week's vlog. Every day I write in my journal that I, my intention that I impact the lives of 10 million women and that was the reason for me sort of starting vlogging on this channel not the original reason I started this channel because I started that a few years ago but it's evolved over the years as I've gone through um, my own sort of healing process and this trip that I'm about to embark on the first time I've left the country since 2019 so five years ago and I'm going on a three-month journey that's the longest I can stay out of the country on my travel insurance and I'm going to Australia and the longest time I can stay in any one um, trip in Australia 90 days at a time so this actually literally started with a dream back in November when I had a dream that I went to Australia for the day as you do <laughs> and I didn't have any money for the return ticket and I thought well actually I don't need to go back I could stay here and for me it just felt like a very symbolic dream I was on a retreat at the time as well and that it was um, I don't believe that certain things in dreams have meaning the meaning of the dream is personal to the dreamer and this for me it was it was like here we are no going back and then circumstances happened. My, one of my sons, a few weeks later, announced he was going out to Australia. I'm going to take these glasses off so and get the reflection. And um, he was sort of like a catalyst and thinking, well, it, it was about following my heart. And I wanted to go for a decent amount of time because it's a long way from England. And I also wanted to, well, it's something, it's been a dream of mine for a while, actually, to be able to work from anywhere in the world. And I was actually listening to a, something a few weeks ago and uh, on Zoom or something, someone put in the chat, well, I would do, or she said she wanted to be an artist, to travel and be an artist or something. And, but what I realised is that the, the conditions are never going to be perfect. Oh, I have wait for all the conditions to be perfect before I go off traveling uh, before I become and then I can become a travel writer but it doesn't work like that when you want to um, you uh, create the life of I don't like saying the life of your dreams but you know what I mean um, to yeah really go for for what you want and that's not to say there aren't challenges. There's been a lot of challenges along the way and they will continue. But it's doing that it's despite the challenges and how you deal with them. So, yeah, I had this dream and then um, I was thinking, well, I'd love to do this. Spend a lot of time traveling, work, what can I, working from anywhere in the world. So, of course, growing, monetizing my YouTube channel is part of that to be able to inspire women through my videos and earn money through through the advertising when I uh, get to the partner program. I'm not going to talk any more about that because I am making videos about that as well. So you can go and check out that playlist. Yeah, so if this is your first time here, welcome and please subscribe and help me on my journey. Uh, and, you know, I turned 60 last year and I'm going to be 61 in just under a month. And so I want to just show, well, anybody really, but particularly women, because I am one, uh, that whatever you've been through in your life, that shouldn't stop you going and, and following your heart, uh, whatever that means for you. And also not to be attached to anything. Because when I decide, oh, yeah, I'm going to Australia, the, the money came that I needed, and... But in my mind, I knew, right, I'm not going to sort of keep leaping ahead to the future. I'm not going to leap ahead to the future 
I'm going to stay grounded, stay present and not get attached to this trip because it might not happen. You know, things happen, don't they? They get cancelled. And I'm not being fatalistic here, but I'm just not attached to it. So I hope you understand the difference there. And I think, you know, with this trip, it, it, it's like this journey going forth, they called it in spiritual traditions. It sort of feels like that, it's like that going forth, leaving behind the familiar and all my stuff, really. I've only got a small suitcase, a little um, rucksack thing with my laptop in it and all the bits I need, like the gimbal for filming this and a notebook and a few other bits. But I've got very little and that's all I need. That's all I need to be able to earn money. And of course, you know, my limiting beliefs have been kicking in big time. So much so that I was actually procrastinating on booking my return flight. Now, I needed to have my return flight booked because otherwise they didn't let me in the country. I only booked it a few days ago uh, because I was scared. I was thinking, oh my God, you know, what if I end up spending way more money than I budgeted for and I run out of money? Maybe I should cut the trip short. Well, the whole point of this trip is for me to be able to earn money while I'm traveling. So although, yes, I've got money, there are other things I can do and I can earn even more. So the whole, so I booked right up to the last day that the maximum that I can stay on my uh, visa and my travel insurance. And, and I thought, I'm going to make this work. This is about making this work because my limiting beliefs have held me back too much and something I sort of had a you know you had a lot of light bulb moment I heard um, uh, one of my previous coaches talking about um, quantum leaps and then it was like this aha moment right well if you want to have a quantum leap in your life whatever that looks like for you whether it's a change of job of lifestyle you've got to take big action so there's not much bigger action than going to Australia for three months, is there? And really not knowing what I'm doing once I get there. Well, I've got a rough idea, but at the moment, all I've got booked is two nights in Singapore, staying with an old school friend. Then I fly to Darwin. I've got a couple of nights in an Airbnb. I've got my Greyhound um, ticket, very kindly sponsored by Greyhound Australia. I wrote to them and I said, look, I'm launching my career as a travel writer and vlogger would you help me out by giving me a travel pass and they very kindly did <laughs> so and and I, I shared about this on my Instagram and I think on uh, LinkedIn and probably Facebook as well and people were saying oh I wouldn't have thought of doing that so it's just a case of being creative thinking outside the box because I've always loved writing and I even did a travel writing course a few years ago and that was again that was something that came out of um, a trip which again was sort of like following my heart following my intuition I didn't really do anything with uh, with what I learned and then when I was thinking about this trip and thinking well what can I do to earn money while I'm traveling having ideas seeing a friend who I know is a voiceover artist and records audio box I thought, I could do that. I could record audio books. Okay, Google, how do I get a job at a, company, a publishing company recording audio books for them? And um, one of the top links of my search was a link to a travel writing workshop. Nothing to do with uh, recording audio books. And all the uh, other links were, were related to publishing companies and audio books and stuff. So it was almost like the universe put that there in front of me like as a kick up the backside, this is what you need to be doing, Helen. So, um, but of course there's the limiting belief, so well that's not a valid way to earn money. But how many travel writers are there, you know? There's people earn money from blogging now, don't they? And blogging and as well as writing in, in traditional uh, publications as well, magazines and papers and things. So of course it's a valid way to earn money. And this journey as well feels a bit like a spiritual journey as well because I don't know what's going to happen. I'm allowing it to unfold and it's a big test of my faith and particularly in 
faith in myself that I that I can do this. It's all worked out so far. There have been hiccups along the way, but that's life. It's how you deal with those hiccups. And when I arrived at Heathrow earlier, first thing, go to check in. My passport wouldn't scan. So I thought, no, I'm going to the traditional check-in desk where you speak to a person and they do it. And then it took like two minutes. I had to queue, obviously, but the actual process took two minutes. And then when I went through the the passport control, so just checking time, don't want to miss my flight, do I? Um, that uh, and you came through into this it's just like sensory overload lots of people lots of noise music shops all this stuff for sale I mean you know but actually then I came to the gate came up here and it's lovely and peaceful and I wish I'd come up I should have come up here sooner but it doesn't matter it was about my response to it I'm thinking well I have a choice here I can let this upset me or I can just Keep the inner peace, keep my inner calm, stay calm inside and and just let life unfold, live it moment by moment. And of course we can make plans, obviously I had to book my flight and decide what day I'm going and that kind of thing, but not being attached to the outcome and what it's going to look like and what's going to happen when I'm out there. And of course I'm going to be um, talking about my journey on the way as well. So thank you for watching and uh, please support me by subscribing and give me a comment and a like, share with all your solo traveller friends and I will see you very soon. So in the meantime, I will leave you with a picture of the planes and take care, go well and lots of love.